Welcome to Andy Order Walk. For today, I have with me here a new IEM from Moondrop, which is the Moondrop LAN, L A N. So before we talk about the sound, let's just check the build and the content itself. All right. So as you can see on screen right now, what we have here is a full metal shell Moondrop LAN, and I must say that it looks very neat. Simple and Spartan, no nonsense design. This is in fact a uh, reminiscence of the last seen uh, Moondrop design, which I have observed from uh, Moondrop Stellaris. Except that this is a lot smaller. Okay, inside here there's a 10 mm single dynamic driver, beryllium coated dome, rated at 32 ohm and with 120 dB of sensitivity. Okay, so that's the part on the IEM itself and we here also have this very nice looking cable silver plated cable which is uh, in two pin termination with 3.5 mm single ended and as for the rest of course standard boxes and silicon tips included inside here all right so now let's talk about the sound aspect of this uh, moondrop LAN. Before I do that, let's just clarify uh, two things. First, uh, for this sound review, analysis, and impression, I have been spending my time with uh, Moondrop LAN for approximately up to 100 hours now. And primarily, I listen using this uh, Centrance Deckport HD, Hibi FC6, and this uh, VE Abigail Pro. And of course, uh, my phone as well, which is Sony Xperia 1, which is currently being used to record this. And also, I am sharing my playlist in the description below so that you understand what sort of music I used to test it. On screen right now, you will see that there's a graph here at the back of the box, which indicate the tuning element for this Moondrop LAN. And the way I look at it, it's pretty much uh, something that I would consider as a very, very mild V tuning with some boosting in the lower frequency. Perhaps uh, knowing Moondrop, this is something which is tuned towards something which they call VDSF. Okay. On screen right now, you can see that there's 10 different categories which I have identified and will be graded individually. The total number will then be used to determine the final score for this Moondrop LAN. So let's talk about the element from 1 to 10, starting with the dynamic presentation and extension. So let's just put it this way. I consider Moondrop LAN being fairly good with dynamic presentation itself, the way it presents sound. It is clean, cohesive, and crisp sounding. In fact, hovering towards being analytical. However, I must say that the extension itself focuses a bit more on the upper frequency rather than the lower frequency because I can sense that it's kind of a bit roll off with the lower frequency, which I will touch a bit more when I talk about bass section. Okay, now as with tone and timber balance, I must admit that due to that approach of being edging closer towards neutral, it does sound a bit lacking with the analog or organic element to the sound itself. Yes, it is clean, it is neutral, but it is also kind of a bit lean with not weight and density. I wish it could have been a bit more richer. But again, depending on your preference, some people prefer a bit more of neutral presentation. Some people prefer a bit of richer, warmer sound. So land is more towards on the transparent sort of presentation. Okay, then we look into bass performance. So let's just put it this way. <laughs> this land is not for bass head or people who love big bass, or even a Harman sort of uh, bass performance. Because I would say that the focus for this land is more on mid bass rather than sub bass. And it's kind of a bit roll off with the lower frequency, as I said mentioned earlier. I can sense that the decay stage of bass kind of a bit, you know, cut off a bit early. Manner of saying that it is roll off. Having said that, I enjoy the performance of bass from this land. For example, it does really well with 
percussion bass or even string bass for jazz or even rock music there's ample amount of rumble and punch to it with good authority especially coming from mid bass and it sounds organic enough to my ear it is fast and tidy however the only lament that i would say that from that perspective when it comes to dk stage it does sound kind of a bit again roll off switching on to mid range i would consider moondrop land as being one of those iem that is neutral and transparent to the intended sound so it does not exhibit any kind of coloration or any kind of uh, warming to the sound itself let's just take some example for example like you know for male and female vocals it just sounded correct it just sounded neutral and from that perspective perhaps people who prefer a bit of warm sounding presentation from the mid range would find that moondrop land to be a kind of a bit lean and not engaging enough it does not impart that ample amount of emotion especially when subjected to listening to songs like jazz or even ballad however for instrumentals or even percussion or even let's say exciting music it has ample amount of energy to impart that kind of accuracy to the sound itself okay now let's talk about the tribal performance of this moondrop land so let's just put it this way what i'm hearing is that it is quite resolved and quite accurate the extension is quite good there's ample amount of energy and sparkle to it and perhaps the most important thing is that the upper mid range to treble does not exhibit any kind of uh, pina glare which translate into being sibilant however i must say that on certain genre of music especially for those highly energetic music which exhibit a lot of cymbals and splashes i have found that the extension and the decay itself kind of a bit granular or not as smooth sounding as how i prefer it but if i were to keep it to certain genre like for jazz for classical or even pop music you know there is smoothness and there is cohesion in the way the treble segment interchange with the transient itself so that is definitely a good thing now let's talk about technicalities starting with sound stage itself for one moondrop land offers wide sounding sound stage yes it has good amount of space and depth to it i can feel that the instrument being well placed with the positioning itself and it is in fact holographic enough fairly good for a single dynamic driver technically it is also very well with resolution with the imaging itself with the way it handle details macro and micro details the speed itself being fairly good what i'm trying to say is that i haven't had encountered any kind of uh, instant where land sounding congested or even uh, compressed even when subjected to handling very complex sort of music so that is definitely a good thing so technically i would say that overall moondrop land is a very fair performer last on the list would be synergy and versatility it simply means that how well does this moondrop land synergize with different type of partners i have shown you earlier that i have tested my moondrop land with four different partners like this deckport hd fc6 and abigail pro and also my phone i would just simply conclude it this way it does synergize well with neutral sounding partner or even warmer sounding partner but may prove to be a bit bright sounding when pair with natively bright sounding source as well so it's not exactly very versatile you must be very careful with the type of source that you have so essentially moondrop land has scored a total number of 73 out of 100 so effectively means that from my nd order vault grading system this is a four star iem comparison so how does this moondrop land compare against the rest of the competition and perhaps a lot of people will be asking how does it compare with moondrop own iem which is the chu okay in order to do that let's just have a look at the specification itself yes both of them uses 10 mm dynamic driver however the first difference that i notice is that this land is beryllium coated dome where else chu is titanium coated okay if that makes any sense to you it does impart a difference in the way the output being presented so let's just uh, skip that and talk about the sound itself 
I have listened to two previously, and if I rec recall correctly, right, two would even sound a bit leaner or not as rich sounding as this land. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that I am sensing that land itself, despite being not as rich as how I like it, it does sound a bit more with the note width itself as compared to two. And it is, in fact, you know, a bit more resolving as well. So, does it present any kind of improvement from the original two? Yes, it does. Within the same price bracket, one of the comparison that I would like to bring up on this Moondrop land is against Tangzu Warner SG. Okay, let's just put it this way. Warner SG is a bit more musical. It is smoother and it is a bit more organic. However, from another perspective, this land is also a bit more analytical, resolving and more neutral. In fact, it is also a bit better with technicalities. So it boils down to what sort of sound do you prefer? If you prefer something is, which is a bit warmer and musical, Warner SG it is. Next comparison will be against Tanjim Ola Bass version. Okay, and the reason that I'm bringing up this Ola Bass version is that because pretty much I think both of them are very similarly tuned. Okay, it's kind of like, you know, close to being neutral, but with some focus on mid bass segment. And both are in fact resolving, accurate, and exhibit the similar kind of timber balance which is not so organic but a bit more analytical. The main difference being is that Ola Bass version, as the name implies, even has higher bass boost on the mid bass itself. When Moondrop 2 first came out a few months back, people already liked it. It was very well received, but it was also mentioned there that you know many people would have wished that Chu would have detachable cable and you know what Moondrop listen and we have this right now essentially similar kind of sound tuning with some improvement okay but most importantly you can change the cable as you like and in fact kind of a bit uh, different with the presentation itself it is silver now with slightly different casing similar to Moondrop Stellaris in fact in a way that in order to have that changes, you just need to pay a bit more. In fact, you have to pay double the price of Moondrop 2. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope this has been useful to you. Please stay tuned to my channel and the order vault for more content like this.